Fox 5 News at Noon starts right now. New at noon, we just received this exclusive video of the confrontation that led to an officer being shot in Clayton County. You can see there the officer tackle the suspect in the backyard of the suspect's home. And we just received a picture of the officer who was shot several times during that confrontation. Officer D'Amica Lloyd is now at Grady Memorial Hospital. Good afternoon to you. I'm Portia Bruner. Here's what we know right now. Officer Lloyd responded to a home on Newbury Drive in Jonesboro when investigators say a woman opened fire. A police say 25 year old Ayana Pryor shot Officer Lloyd and then jumped in a car and headed north into Atlanta. Atlanta officers say Pryor also fired at them and their officers fired back. Fox 5's Deidre Dukes is live in Clayton County with the latest on this quickly developing story and more on officers con Lloyd's condition. Deidre? That's right. We spoke to uh, Pryor's family here at their Jonesboro residence just a short time ago. It was when they shared that video with us. Uh, they said that they feel terrible about what happened, that they are praying for this officer. But of course, they are also thinking of their own loved ones, saying that all of this had, could have been prevented because they say that their loved one was suffering a mental health crisis and they believe that this all could have been handled differently. They are also disputing the account uh, that police gave earlier today as far as uh, what happened here at the house, how it all transpired. Uh, the officer uh, who was injured responded here at the house uh, just around 11 p.m. Uh, Ayanna Pryor's mother called Clayton County Police from the residence here at the 7800 block of Newbury Drive on three separate occasions last night, stating her daughter was suicidal. Now, according to Clayton County Police, Pryor produced a handgun and fired two shots at Officer D'Amica Lloyd, striking her when Officer Lloyd responded to the home at around 11 p.m. Uh, Clayton County Police shared this video of Officer Lloyd on their Facebook page when she graduated from the Clayton County Police Academy in August of 2021. Uh, medics transported the officer to Grady Memorial Hospital. Pryor was shot by Atlanta police in the area of Macon Drive and Polar Rock Road in Atlanta after she fled the scene in her vehicle. Uh, medics transported her to Atlanta Medical Center. Her family shared this video from the backyard of their home that they say disputes the officer's accounts of the shooting. They say the officer grabbed Pryor from behind without warning, sparking the violent confrontation. The Nothing news like the that. news said that it was she just started like that. shooting. That's a lie. She was jumping <laughs> on they were on the ground, on top of each other, intertwined in a ball fight when the gun went off. My sister gets got up, up and the cop the didn't. cop was on the ground. Now, the officer was transported to the hospital in critical condition. We're told that uh, the um, young lady who shot her. We are told by her family that they are still waiting an update on her condition. But this is, of course, a developing story and we'll have an update for you beginning at four o'clock. That's the latest here in Jonesboro. Deidre Dukes, Fox 5 News. Deidre, thank you for sorting through those details for us. Now, we'll be following this story throughout the afternoon as we learn more on the investigation and the officer's condition as well as the suspect's condition. We'll have the latest starting on Fox 5 News at four. You can also stay updated with the Fox 5 News app. It has been exactly one year since Katie Janess and her dog Bowie were found brutally murdered inside Piedmont Park. Officers found her body with dozens of stab wounds and to this day, the person responsible for the brutal attack is still on the run. Now, this afternoon, Atlanta police will update the public on their year-long criminal investigation. Fox 5's Eric Perry just spoke with a family member still desperate for answers and justice. Eric joins us live now from Piedmont Park where this vicious murder happened. Eric? Yeah, good afternoon, Portia. This was arguably one of the biggest cases here in the city of Atlanta last year. Family members I spoke with say they are not giving up hope and finding whoever's responsible. We do know family, friends, and community members coming together later this evening for a park bench dedication here at Piedmont Park. But let's walk you through the really horrific crime that happened exactly one year ago. It happened July 28th, 2021. Atlanta police found the bodies of Katie Janess and her dog Bowie inside this famous park. It sparked safety concerns for the area as they believe Janess was just simply walking her dog at the time of the murder. Family members say it's been a long 365 days without concrete answers. 
the person or persons that committed this horrific murder who did this, that confidant knows. Just do the right thing. Imagine that being your child and not having any peace and just knowing or accountability, consequence. Now, Atlanta police have not released many details surrounding this case. And as of now, no suspect information has been released at all. Family members hope that will change this afternoon. We know APD will have some sort of news conference at 3 p.m. at their headquarters. Of course, we will be there and we'll have the latest for you starting at 4. That's the latest here at Piedmont Park. I'm Eric Perry, Fox 5 News. All right, a long quest for justice indeed there. Eric, thank you. Now today we are also expecting an update from Atlanta police on the unsolved murder of 12 year old David Mack. You may recall it was February 2021 when the seventh graders body was found in a drainage ditch near his grandmother's home. An autopsy report revealed Mack was shot six times and had other injuries that suggested he may have been brutally, brutally beaten. Rather, Crime Stoppers is offering up to $10,000 in this case. All right, it's a hot, humid start to the day, and we've got some showers and thunderstorms already starting to pop up on our Fox 5 Live Viper. So let's go take a look at the uh, storms around the area. Nothing here in Atlanta as of right now, but that could change as we work our way throughout the afternoon. Cluster of showers up in the North Georgia mountains from Blairsville all the way up toward Hayesville and North Carolina. These will be moving off to the east over toward Hiawassee. So get ready for some rainfall up in Hiawassee down in uh, Upson County near the uh, Thomaston area. Got a couple of showers there. String of showers right now from noon and all the way down into West Point Lake, the southwest corner there of Troop County. Looks like a couple are trying to get developed over here in Carroll County and also some activity a little bit farther north into the northwest corner of the state. Outside over downtown Atlanta right now, it's just hot. 87 degrees, dew points up to 72, so feels like 93. We'll have heat index values at times today, 95 to 100, so be careful if you're going to be outside. Make sure you drink lots of water. Northwest wind coming in right now at 8 miles an hour, 89. Warmer over in Athens, it's 88 right now in Rome, 86 in Noonan, 80 86 as well in Edenton, 87 as you head northeast up to Gainesville. Hour by hour forecast should top out right around 93 or so by later on this afternoon. We'll have more on the forecast for you coming up in a few minutes. Portia. All right, Jeff, thank you. New at noon, three suspects have been arrested and charged with felony murder and robbery in the murder of a 15 year old boy in DeKalb County. Romello Jazz Heard was killed Tuesday night around 6.30 near the leasing officer, le office rather, of Pepper Tree Apartments. Heard's mother says her son was about to begin high school. Chaz Lawson, Monterey Janaeus, and Cameron Jackson are now booked in the DeKalb County Jail. The LaGrange police are investigating the brutal murder of a pregnant woman. 26-year-old Brianna Burgess was found stabbed to death yesterday morning on Fort Drive. And two suspects, Curtez Avery and Shalandra Freeman, are charged with her murder and the death of her unborn child. Police say the three had known each other for several years. Burgess was five months pregnant and the mother of three other children. We want to see justice for her <laughs> exactly. because she did Thanks. not deserve yes. what happened to her. A vigil will be held for Brianna Burgess tomorrow in LaGrange. Her family has started a GoFundMe page to cover funeral expenses. A Democratic candidate for Governor Stacey Abrams is promoting a plan she says will make housing more affordable and available all across Georgia. Abrams says if elected, she'll increase the inventory of housing, keep people from being pushed out of gentrified neighborhoods, and reduce homelessness. She claims Governor Brian Kemp is sitting on $450 million in federal rental assistance that could keep Georgians from being evicted. Across Georgia, too many families can't find affordable homes to buy or rent. That leaves them displaced, transient, and too often they face the impossible decision of whether to feed their families or keep a roof over their heads. 
Well, Governor Brian Kemp's campaign responded and says, quote, in the last year alone, Governor Kemp has allocated $100 million to support nonprofits that provide affordable housing and aid individuals experiencing homelessness. A statement goes on to say if Stacey Abrams wants to blame anyone for economic instability, she should start with Joe Biden and her own party. Still ahead on Fox 5 News at noon, Pfizer is moving forward with its tests for an Omicron-specific vaccine, but some health experts acknowledge possible vaccine fatigue. And it is day two of the Falcons training camp. We're getting a look at all the action next.